I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football Network. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and I'm joined for a transfer special by 90 Min's transfer guru, the brilliant Mr. Graham Bailey. Graham, how are you doing, mate? Welcome to the programme. Thanks for having me, Harry. Doing great, thank you. Good stuff. Glad that you're here and hopefully you can shed some light for us on what is going on at Arsenal Football Club at the moment. Uh, before we dive into that, just want to say a few hellos to people in the chat because there's lots of you with us at the moment. Big hello to Troy, to Joey, uh, to John, to Lynn, who says, uh, where is it? Uh, hold on a second. I've lost. Here we go. Harry, you have to stop this sunbathing. Every time I'm like one or two minutes late, <laughs> I start to get grief uh, in the comments. I can assure you I'm not sunbathing because it is cloudy here and overcast and miserable uh typical british weather but anyway graham uh, let's uh, let's get right into it because uh, we had a chat the other day on the 90 min talking transfers podcast and it was more by sort of luck than design that it turned out to be a really arsenal heavy show uh, i stepped in as host for the week because scott was of course away and it just so happened that we had loads of arsenal stuff to talk about so I want to get your takes on some of those subjects. And I want to start off with Bukayo Saka because there's been a lot of talk about his contract. There's been a lot of talk about a, a desire from his camp to kind of delay putting pen to paper on a new deal. That sparked speculation about where he might be going next. So tell us your understanding of the Bukayo situation uh, as it stands. Yeah, obviously, Arsenal would like to sit down with him um, ASAP. His, his deal run, doesn't it run until 2023. They have an option to 2024, so it is 2024, really. And and they would just like to reward him for his progress, etc. And that would say an extension. Saka is, is he's happy at Arsenal, but obviously he's getting to that time of his career now, Harry, where he needs to be playing playing for one of the Europe's Europe's finest teams. And and Arsenal at the moment aren't one of those teams. And it's, it is a bit of Declan Ricey type situation where he's probably outgrowing you at the minute. But it's up to you, it's up to Arsenal now and Mikel Arteta and Edu to serve up something better for him. And you've got probably 12 months now to set in course the the Arsenal train in the right direction. And I don't I don't really think by saying you need to be challenging for the title. But Saka needs to see where you're going. If he believes you will challenge the title in two years, then that'll probably be good enough. But he needs to know you're going in the right direction at the very least. And so I think that's where you're at. You've got you're going to have 12 months basically to get this right. And I, I'm not I'm not sure whether he'll sign an extension this summer. Maybe I think I want to talk. He's not too bothered. Not that's the wrong way I say. He's he's not too eager to sit down and commit his long-term future to the club at this moment. That is to say he won't have a long-term future at Arsenal. It's just whether Arsenal have a long-term future where Saka fits into that. And so, it's just where, he, where he's at in his career. That's as simple as that. And, and that makes perfect sense. As you say, you know, as Bukayo Saka progresses and develops and grows, he will want to see that Arsenal as a football club are on a similar trajectory yeah. in order to, to facilitate all the things that he wants to achieve in his career. I'm sure he wants to play in the Champions League. I'm sure he wants to compete for the biggest trophies. But can you put Arsenal, find, uh, Arsenal fans' minds at rest, at least that for now, there isn't anything close to happening? It, it, Bukayo Saka is not leaving Arsenal this summer, to your knowledge, is he? No, 2022, yeah, Kai Saka won't be going anywhere. No, he'll be staying at Arsenal this summer. He 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 wants Arsenal to be at that. That's the, that's the thing, Harry. He does want Arsenal to be challenging for the title. He does. And and if he can challenge the title with Arsenal, I think he'd be more than happy to stay at the club long term. But it's, as, as we say, it's up to them to get on the that trajectory, them to prove themselves, them to get these big names in, um, to improve the squad, which does need... I don't think it needs major surgery, you know, but it needs a few procedures. <laughs> there, there's certainly work that needs to be done for sure. Uh, let's move on to another player that Arsenal being linked with uh, as an incoming, and that's Yuri Tielemans. Um, tell us your understanding of that situation. Lots of reports suggesting that Arsenal are pretty confident now of getting that deal done. Is that what you're hearing? Yeah, very much so. Tielemans has emerged as one of the top targets. 
maybe ahead of the likes of, of a Ruben Neves or someone that of that ilk. Although they are very different players, you could see, hey, I think them two would be a wonderful partnership, wouldn't they? I don't think they're very similar. And yeah, Tillemans is the player that the Arsenal want to dictate things in the middle. Arteta is focused on him now. Leicester are prepared to let him go. He's rejected their contract with his current deal expiring in 2023. And yet, if things are progressing, Arsenal have held talks. It'll be over the fee. Arsenal want to pay less than 25. Leicester looking for closer to 30. As it stands at the moment, it doesn't look as if there'll be an issue with this one. I think once the national break is over, this one could, could accelerate quite quickly. But Arsenal very much in pole position. It would be a very good deal if he could get it done at that price. Obviously, he's had a bit of a downturn in form in the last, last 12 months, but there's a lot been going on at Leicester and stuff. But he's still a, a quality performer. He is, on his day, still one of the best one in the Premier League. One of my personal favourites. I love the way he plays. And I think it is a player that Arsenal don't possess, Harry. I think he's, he's very... He's just a good... In, in some ways, almost a box to box player, you know, he'll, he'll tackle, he'll, he will attack as well. I think it's a player that Arsenal do need. I think they've been focused a lot of these defensive midfielders, the parties and the Zackers, but players like that can't do what Taylorman's can do. He can do in that set midfield things that players you, you can't do. Yeah, you've got the order guards of this world, but they're not there to play a deep line centre midfield, are they? So I think Taylorman's can offer something that you don't already have. But this, yeah, deal is quite far down the line. It's not done yet, but yeah, Arsenal very much in poor position to get him done, Harry. If you had to guess, and I know it, it is just a guess, would you say that this would probably be the first deal of significance that Arsenal get over the line this summer? Yeah, it's tough, obviously, because we're in for a lot of forwards as well and what happens to get done. Um, I think this international break hasn't helped some of these some of these deals get done because it, it seems to be never-ending at the moment, this international break. <laughs> can't believe England have still got two games to play in it. Um but yeah, it looks looks as if this one's the furthest forward of any of the deals that Arsenal are doing, as you say, any of the significant deals that they are doing. Let's talk Gabriel Jesus. Uh, we had a little bit of a chat on the Talking Transfer show the other day, which you can check out, by the way. It's part of the 90 Min uh, podcast network. If you uh, check out 90 Min on Twitter, you'll find it. If you follow Graham at Graham Bailey, I'm sure you'll find a retweet there as well. And you can find it on my page too. Um Gabriel Jesus, a player that Arsenal clearly like, a player that clearly Arsenal have in their sights. But there's a lot of people out there, Graham, that feel like Gabriel Jesus may not want to move to Arsenal. Now, what's what's the situation here? Because the fee could be an issue. Could where Arsenal are at, the fact that they don't have Champions League, could that be an issue? Talk to us a little bit about what you believe to be going on with regards to a potential move for him to Emirates Stadium. Yeah, I think the main thing we have to remember with his is, is Man City are desperate to keep him. They really want to keep him. We showed that in the last in the last three months of the season. He played in every major game for Man City. He he's a big player for City. Pep wants him to stay. Of the three major major forwards at City have got out of contract in twenty twenty three, Mara's Sterling and Hazus. So I think Hazus is the one who they really, really want to keep. Um Pep has shown him that by playing him in, in the Manchester derby in the Liverpool game, in the Real Madrid semi-finals, in the last game of the season, the title decided against Villa. He played, he started all these games. And so I think that's the first thing. We haven't seen him reject his contract yet. I think people are forgetting this. People say, oh, he wants to leave City. He hasn't rejected that contract yet. So we need to keep an eye on that. Yes, we know Arsenal like him. A lot of clubs like him. And there are clubs from around Europe, I'm hearing, Harry, I'm hearing more and more names literally every day about the teams who are really paying attention to hears us from Italy to Spain. Arsenal don't have this. I think Arsenal have been, um, from my honest opinion, I think within the club, they've been, they've been a bit too proactive in talking about him. And I think, and that does get fans excited. They know where this has come out from the club at some point. They're very much in for him, but I don't know, I have this feeling if he, if he does leave City, and I think it's a big if, I think he's going to go up with Champions League team. And I suspect he'll leave England if he does leave. That's just, just a hunch I've got. Because, because for the life of me, and this isn't this isn't against Arsenal in any way, shape, or form, Harry. I just don't see why a starting player for Man City would would choose to to drop down to Arsenal. It mystifies me, to be honest. So, we are reading reports today from various outlets that there is, if not a, a definite agreement, something close to an agreement in place between Arsenal and Man City, at least for the fee. 
But are you saying that that isn't the problem? And the problem, if if there was one in this deal, would be between Jesus and Arsenal in terms of whether it be the place he wants to end up. Yeah, that's a big thing, you know. And 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 Arsenal, you know, they're not silly. They they know they may be one of the one of the pawns in this deal to get him a better deal elsewhere. This is football; it happens everywhere, and and they're not stupid enough not to realise that. I don't think it's that far advanced that it's a case of the the fee being agreed. You know, um, City are going to demand an awful lot of money for this player, an awful lot of money. And what would you say is fair? What would you say is a fair amount? Um, if I was City, I'd be asking for fifty plus. I don't necessarily think I would pay that if I was Arsenal. It depends what Arsenal want to use him as as well, Harry. I don't see Hazus as a number nine. If Arsenal are signing him to be a number nine and if they pay him King's ransom in this fee, I don't know. I, I don't think you sign the 20 goal season number nine. I really don't. Do you think he sees himself as a number nine, though? And do you think that could play a part in where he ends up? Not necessarily, because I think all these clubs who come in for him, he's going to play as a forward, and etc. And we've seen his best football come on the right at City. And, and we've seen Pep call him the best closing. Down, you just could argue that he's, he's having a phenomenal season there in playing that role. It, it's it's a tough one, you know. It, it, we we haven't heard his has come out, and I said we haven't seen him come out and literally turn that contract down yet, Harry. Which I think is the thing. I'm not saying he he won't come out and and, and turn it down, but we we know that Mane has said no to Liverpool. We know that Salah has said no to a new deal. We haven't heard that from Gabriel Jesus yet. We've had the links, etc. But that confirmation that he's rejected that contract hasn't come out yet. And that would worry me slightly as an Arsenal fan. Another player that you mentioned on the Talking Transfers podcast the other day, and that story kind of caught fire off the back of that, was Richarlison. Hmm. You say that Arsenal really, really like the Everton man. Um, how concrete do you believe the interest to be in him? Yeah, it's a long-standing interest, this one, Harry. We know how Arsenal have liked him. Since um, since he left Watford, since almost when he went to Everton, they've always liked him, they've appreciated him. And he's, he's a different type of player. I, I have read some of the media stuff, obviously it got picked up, and I'm surprised how negative some of the Arsenal Rex fans have been with him. For I, I love Richarlison the way he plays. I think, I think he's a bit of a Marmite player, to be honest. But I, I personally love him. I love his all-action, I love his aggressiveness. I think he'd be a great sign for Arsenal, I really do. I think he can play across the front line. He, he, I think Arsenal need at least two strikers. We talked about that as well, didn't we, Harry? That at least two forwards are needed here. And someone like Richarlison would be a fantastic eight. Hey, if you can afford them both, get them both. But um, yeah, there's a long standing interest there. There, always, there has been. We know Arsenal have had talks um, with Everton, finding out the situation. That we know Richarlison's agent to keep Arsenal informed. There's a lot of teams in for him as well. I Yeah, I just get a feeling that Richarlison's more likely than his us. But hey, they, they like them both. They've had talks for them both, and and obviously there's a, there's other players as well. You know, it's, it's how it's how modern football works. You know, very it's very rare. It's only maybe the Liverpools and the Cities of this world, Harry, who probably only need one player that they focus on one player and go for them, knowing fine well that they'll probably get them. The rest of the football world has to try and put together a list of four or five targets, knowing that you're only going to get one of those. Interesting. What about? Uh, Alexander Zinchenko, uh, another player that Arsenal have been linked with. What's your <laughs> view on this? Uh, you told me the other day that you believe that playing in midfield is is imperative for him when he comes to the point, if he does, if Manchester City do allow him to go, where he gets to decide which club he's, he's going to next. Do you believe that that is the deal breaker for Zinchenko? I think, yeah, you know, if, if, he's, gonna, if he's just going to go to a club and play left back, left wing back, and a little bit of midfield, he'll just stay at Man City. Why? Why wouldn't you? He, he, he played a big role. He's played a big role in there recently. I think, and I did. I've done a story today um, on this. It was a little, little bit late, but he's he's just basically open to the idea of going, as long as his midfield ambitions are met. The way he plays for Ukraine in the centre, he's he's a he's a wonderfully talented centre midfielder. He really is, but obviously the fact he's got a wand of a left foot, he gets pushed out to the left-hand side. We know City have had a few issues on that left-hand side, um, losing the likes of Mendy, etc. So he's had to be played there. And But I do think if he does go, and there's a lot of interest, as we know, Arsenal are just one of a few clubs who like him. Um, West Ham, a whole host of other clubs around Europe, they all, they all like him. He's a really talented footballer, we know that. 
But yeah, he does want to try and play centre midfield, which is a big thing. And and the fact he will be able to choose his club if he does leave. City want a decent fee. They want over thirty million, and and he probably is worth that, isn't he? He's a very good player. But it's whether it does does Zinchenko play centre midfield for Arsenal? You can probably you've probably got better thoughts than me on this, Harry. I'm not sure whether he doesn't get pushed out left again at, at Arsenal. You know, um, as you know, as you said to me before, there's Tini issues. It's Tavares who looks a million miles away for me. He'll probably get pushed up to left, and so I think he'd be a bit skeptical about joining any club where he thought he was going to spend ninety percent of his time playing on the left. Because if that was the case, he'd just stay at City. See that that changes things for me as an Arsenal fan because when the idea of Zinchenko was first touted, when that was first talked about, I have to admit, fifty percent at least of the appeal of Zinchenko for me was the fact that he can play in left back when you need him to and cover that role. But also, I do believe he's a good centre midfielder. I do. I, I think he's he's proven that, particularly at international level, uh, that you know when he's had a run in a team playing in the centre of midfield and is allowed to get on the board and dictate play and almost be a bit of a focal point, he can really influence games. But I'd be lying if I said that the whole thing about him playing left back wasn't at least, as I say, fifty percent of the appeal to me. So if if what you're saying is is that he doesn't want that, he doesn't want to be a utility man. He doesn't want to be utilised in a number of positions. Then maybe it's not the right fit. And and I guess that's probably how Zinchenko will see it too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly how, you know, um, and Man City would like him to stay. You know, I'm prepared to offer him a new deal if he's prepared to play this. Um, it's not a jack of all trades. It's a, if he's prepared to fill this left-hand side role a little bit. Will he ever get that central chance at City? I'd be sceptical, maybe a few games, but he's never going to play a 30-game centre midfield for, for City, is he? You know, that's not going to happen. So, yeah, it's an interesting one to keep an eye on. If any club can persuade him that he can move there, then it is that. And I don't know. I think I think it'd be a huge chunk of a budget to pay for Arsenal-wise to sign a player who, who, who would be not a squad player, but one who would be swapped around a little bit. You know, it's... Yeah, I think I think it is that centre midfield thing that w- would really appeal to him, and yeah, Arsenal might never know. Arsenal might have that plan for him. We don't know how, but it doesn't sound like they do. In terms of the budget that Arsenal are expected to have this summer, there's been there's been a number of reports in the last sort of week or so, almost suggesting that actually it's not going to be anywhere near what some Arsenal fans are hoping. Um, and I don't know if you have, but have you had any indication or any information as to roughly what that might be? I don't, I don't think it's one of these where set budgets. I think, you know, Arsenal realise it's, it's two strikers. It's it's the midfielders, it's the fullbacks. And I, th- I think they have a general plan in place, Harry, in terms of the, the cost, you know, and it depends who, because you can have a list of targets. You can have here's here's us, which Allison, maybe Debala previously or something like that. And yeah, I I think <laughs> they'd have a, a ballpark figure, but I don't think it's set in stone as to what it is. You you never know who comes on the market, Harry. You know, close to you know, like like a Zinchenko may end up coming on the market in August or maybe a centre half who they weren't planned on. You know, what happens if Saliba comes back and suddenly decide to sell him? That as the budget, I think I think it's um, a living, moving thing. But I would surmise, yeah, well, at three figures, one fifty, two hundred, depending if you got everyone who they wanted, you know. Um, but I said they need two strikers, two forwards, anyway. And, and again, maybe Nicholas Pepe. Let's see what happens with him. Do you are you able to move him on um, and get the money back from him? So it is a moving, it's a moving thing, especially with Arsenal. But I think they are a bit wary of being too thin on the ground, which was that what happened after January, you know, so I don't think we'll see a host of your squad players being sold like Mitley Niles. I'd be surprised if you didn't try and keep him for next season because again, next season, everyone's got to remember there's five subs next season. So it's a lot easier actually for the bigger clubs like an Arsenal, the top six, top eight, you can keep some of these squad players happy. They'll be able to get a lot more game time in the Premier League because they can get more more appearances. I think we'll see that actually a season where we'll see if quite a few less loans, Harry, coming up. Um, and Arsenal will be one of those teams who keep a lot more players because, yeah, there'll be 10 on the bench, but you can use half of them. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. That That's a, a really important point. Um, there's been some rumours today regarding Borussia Dortmund's Manuel Akanji. Apparently, he's been offered to Arsenal. Do you know anything about this or, or does it feel like just because I don't know how, how true or accurate this even feels, let alone is. Yeah, he was always on United's long list, should I say. He wasn't on, he wasn't in their top two targets. You know, that was always Paul, Paul Torres. Um, for them was the main main one with Yuri and Timber, but he was always on the long list. I, I, for Arsenal, I don't see why if Saliba's coming back, I don't see why they'd want to send half. I think Kanji probably is being offered around the Premier League. I don't doubt that. Um, he's been offered around the Premier League the last twelve months, really. People, and when we say offered, it's just the age just letting letting the clubs know that he might be available, etc. It does happen. That's how football works, you know. People. You know, Arsenal like getting a, a, a monthly email off Borussia Dortmund, letting them know who's available. That's not how football works. Um, so yeah, I don't doubt it. I think I think he's one again. That going back to Saliba, if if he was to leave, Akanji could be one a type the type of player that Arsenal might look at. But I don't think it's a priority. You might you might know better you know better than me how you're watching Arsenal week in week out. I don't see it as a priority, especially with Saliba coming back. Who for me, I think Saliba could easily walk into that squad at Arsenal and be your best centre half by by quite some distance as well. Yeah, I, I don't think centre half is a priority, particularly if, if, as you say, Saliba is is going to slot back into the group. Um, one more player I want to pick your brains on. He's not been specifically linked to Arsenal an awful lot, but there was something that happened on social media the other day that kind of sparked the Arsenal fan base into a bit of a frenzy around the player that we've been linked with before, and that is Brighton's Eves Basuma. Uh, what do you know to be the situation with him this summer? Is he going to be on the move? Are Arsenal a likely destination? Yeah, Arsenal, again, are long-term admirers of this guy. I looked at him last summer very strongly. I was told there was a few issues that Arsenal thought, oh, we're not sure on this. And so they backed away. And then he's going to have a great season. He's out of contract in 2023. Arsenal do like him. They really do. You know, but they've got a lot of these types of players, haven't they? I think Basuma is, don't get me wrong, Basuma is much better than the Kong, uh, El Nelly. He's, he's different class to them type of players. But you can't just keep bringing them all in. You've got to make room for them at the same time. So, yeah, he, he would be one I, I keep an eye on. I've been told that it's not necessarily the case that he will leave this summer, but he does have a lot of interest. Aston Villa, Stephen Dryad likes him a lot. He's already held talks. Brighton are willing, are willing to sell at the right price which we think he's got a year left. We understand he's around 30, 35, which isn't an awful lot in Premier League terms, is it? So, yeah, he'd be one I keep an eye on. Would Arsenal bring in two centre midfielders in the same summer? Not not that they don't need it, but I'd be sceptical if you bring two in at the same time, Harry. You know, I think it's, again, talking about budgets. These two forwards are going to cost a lot of money. Whoever they are, they're going to be cost a lot of money, whether it's a Skamaka, Richarlison, Hears Us, Two or two or two from any of the ones on your list are going to be very, very expensive. And will that mean that only Taylor comes in centre mid? That would be my suspicion at this point. Sorry, I said I was going to ask you about one more player. I'm going to throw another one in there because you <laughs> no just problem. mentioned him. And yeah. that is uh, that is Gianluca Scamacca because a few days ago we were told or we were reading that he had rejected the idea of a move to Arsenal. But it seems that Sassuolo, the club, are quite happy to play ball in terms of, uh, you know, entertaining this idea of him leaving. Now, the problem for Arsenal fans is that we were burnt by this in January. Uh, we had an agreement, as we believe, with with Fiorentina in place for Dusan Vlavic, only for him to then say, I'd prefer to go to Juve and basically kill any chance of coming to Arsenal. It, are Arsenal fans at risk of falling into this trap again with Skamaka, or do you think there is something in this? Oh, Skamaka, yeah, is, is a million percent more likely than Vlavic. For, like I said that you were never going to get Vlavic for me. You know, he always wanted to go to Juve, and that it wasn't a detriment to to Arsenal. I don't, he, he wouldn't have come to anyone in England, Harry. To be fair, he was always wanting to go to Juventus. We know that his agents were being mischievous. They were trying to push him onto these English clubs. Arsenal took the bait to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, I don't think that one was ever likely. Skamaka is an interesting one. His agents are working very hard to see what else is out there. Uh, you know, it, they're pushing him to Tottenham, to Chelsea, to all sorts of these teams. It happens. You know, and unfortunately, 
Arsenal can't offer him Champions League football. He's an Italian international. I think in the ideal world, he would like to join a club like that. But I think he's sensible. I think Arsenal have got a shot at this, at this guy. I really, they really do. They've done the homework on him. They've done. They've had talks. They like him. I say we did speculate. He's a different type of player to what you've got. Is he Arteta's cup of tea? I think he probably would be. You know, he he's potentially an outstanding player. He really is. And I think at the price, what, 35, 40 million. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't get overly excited just yet because a lot of things can happen. A lot of clubs are looking for strikers. Anyone could pop up and go for anyone. But if I say token, it means that Arsenal are looking at other people as well and someone could come out of left wing, pardon the pun, and, and, and be Arsenal's cup of tea and assign him. So Arsenal are very busy in this forward market. But he, he is a player to like. He's a player they've talked about. He's very much in contention. Um. I, I don't believe that at this point he's turned down a move or ruled it out. They haven't made a bid. You know, Arsenal wouldn't be making a bid or talking about a player if he didn't want to come anyway. So that's, what, that's a bit of confidence to Arsenal fans. You know, they would, they would, if 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 he really didn't want to come to Arsenal, they wouldn't be wasting the time at this point in them. Yeah, no, good stuff. Good to hear. Um, just before I let you go, Graham, um, just. Give us a little bit of insight as to what it's like doing your job during a transfer window, because, um, you know, you, you must be on the phone all day. You're talking to various different people. You must be chasing people to get verification on, on certain things. Talk to us a little bit about the kind of day to day, particularly during the transfer window of, of somebody in your role. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting. I'm not going to deny it's interesting, but yeah, covering basically every Premier League club, but then we have the ones on the continent as well. Um, we have ones who, we have certain agents who we speak to, I speak to on a daily basis. Um, I speak to some clubs uh, as well. It's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a fascinating time. You know, we're trying to speak to people, get these little lines off everyone. It's all these deals that, that are happening constantly, which, um, we're always looking for that next line on these deals, like a Skamaka or something, Harry, um, those types of ones. Like a Gabriel Jesus, um, I, I've, I've got a few lines on him that I need to look into. Unfortunately, I can't say them today. It doesn't take on massive, but we're always chasing the next bit and, and lots of people have different takes. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it gives you a lot of pleasure when you see deals come off that you're saying, but yeah, everyone... It's one of them. You don't really get the glory. So it's always the ones that don't come off that you get the real, the real input. Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a, yeah. Oh, it's like Hugh Grekatecki. Yeah, I remember I broke, I broke out in January. But yeah, what, what have you done? For, it's a, it's the old one. What have you done for us lately? Sort of thing from the fans, which is fair enough. You know, you put yourself up there to be shut down. Um, but yeah, it's really busy. Lots of agents talk. Lots of talk of work, and obviously through work, working ninety minutes transfer correspondent, they're asking me to chase things as well, different things. Um, I don't, and obviously don't don't tell my wife. I said this. I don't know everything about everything. Um, <laughs> I, I, can, I can't confirm that, but um, we try. We try and keep in tabs with. It, it's really hard, like unless you're a fan of the club, as you know. It's like we have to kind of try and keep on top of every single club. It's not having that knowledge of if, as you know, as an Arsenal fan, someone will get linked to Arsenal, and I have to look into that because I'm not really sure of the situation. Whereas you, off the top of your head, you know that centre half thing is probably rubbish because I'm not rubbish. I don't like to say that because there is someone somewhere, there is something in it talking to someone, or but the Arsenal centre half thing may be a bit long winded and not unlikely because of your current situation. I have to look into that a little bit more, and I do yeah. that with every club where, and I do. I don't tend to take many days off because if you take a couple of days away, it can take you so long to get back into the mix of it and see who's doing what. But yeah, it makes for a long summer, but an interesting one. As I say, I'm not going to sit here and moan about it because there could be worse things I could be doing in life. So no, I love doing it. I love football. And um, yeah, and I love transfers. I really do. I, must admit, I, I prefer transfers to watching football nowadays. Harry, I think it's <laughs> the inside of dealings. I do, I do love it to be fair. Brilliant stuff. Graham, thank you so, so much, mate, for joining me. Really appreciate it because I know you're really, really busy at this uh, at this time of year. Uh, if you want to check out more of Graham's work, then you can give him a follow on Twitter at Graham Bailey. It's there on the screen and it'll be in the description. For those of you listening via audio, you can find his work over at 90min.com and various other places. Uh, so do uh, check him out. Graham, thank you so much, mate. Take care, guys. Thanks for having me.
That was the brilliant Graham Bailey, 90 Mins transfer correspondent, joining me there uh, to give us the lowdown on some of the Arsenal-related stories doing the rounds at the moment. Right, we're going to spend the rest of the show taking some of your thoughts and taking some of your questions from the live chat box. So start feeding them in. Start populating that chat box with questions. Pop a cue at the beginning of them. It just makes it easier for me to pick them out. Uh, so please uh, go ahead and do so. Also, if I could just ask while you're filling up the chat box, please do hit the like button if you haven't done so already. There's over 250 of you with me live right now on YouTube, but we've only got 50 likes on the board. Come on, let's get that uh, over the 100 mark. It should be light work. Uh, right, let's go over to the chat box. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, Zeus says he wants Gnabry, Jesus, Tielemans, Bissouma, Zinchenko and Hickey if Arsenal are serious. I think I'd be shocked, mate, if we managed to get all of those over the line. I think three of those is is probably possible if uh, if Arsenal are able uh, to strike those deals. And, you know, as Graham says, there's a lot of moving parts. And listen, I know that during the transfer window, there are people who you look at for information. Um, you know, I can tell you from working with Graham over at 90 Min that, um, you know, he's he's brilliant at what he does and he chases everything and he's very thorough in his research. And um, and as he says there, you know, sometimes people get things wrong based on bad information that they've been handed. So as I always say to you guys, when we come into the transfer window, the way to approach it is to listen, to take things in, um, but to take everything with a pinch of salt until it's all done and dusted. And Graham will tell you that himself. But really interesting to hear uh, his thoughts on some of those potential deals. Uh, Nikomo says, uh, your man Graham did not really fancy us signing Jesus, did he? No. Um, and, and listen, Graham's not the only one that thinks that, right? I mean, I was on TalkSport 2 yesterday with... Um, with Anton Ferdinand and Adi Oladipo, and we were talking about this, and we were talking about the Jesus transfer, and I kind of shared my thoughts on why I think it's it's a goer, like it, it's a deal that could happen, that could be done. But there are a lot of people sort of outside the Arsenal sphere who are looking at this deal and going, well, Gabriel Jesus is playing for the Premier League champions in the Champions League year in, year out. Why would he want to make that downgrade? The way I put it on TalkSport yesterday was, for me, he's been the bridesmaid enough times. He wants to be the bride now. He wants to be the main man. And do not underestimate how much the opportunity to lead a side and to be the main man in a side appeals to footballers who want to feel valued, you know, and he's going to get a handsome sum. You know, he's going to get a decent wage packet. It, Arsenal are a big football club in that sense. He will be on competitive wages. He'll be living in London. He'll have that Brazilian connection with a number of other players involved in the squad right now. You've got Gabriel, you've got Martinelli, you've got Edu at the club as well. And Gabriel Jesus would be another one to add to that Brazilian contingent. So I think there are a lot of reasons why he may well uh, want to take up the move. But I can understand why people from the outside perhaps are thinking, hmm, not really sure about this. Uh, lots of you are saying um, that the Scamacca stuff is a scam. I don't know that I'd go as far as calling it a scam. Like nobody's ripping you off. But uh, Afsar says it's a hoax. Um, S Tidy says if you've actually watched Serie A, you would know Skamaka is terrible. He's got a he's got a terrible first touch. I'm not going to read out the rest of that comment uh, on the show. Look, he he isn't perfect. Um, and as I've said to you guys when we were first linked with him, I'm not sure that he's ready for the step up to somewhere like Arsenal where he's going to be relied upon and be the main man. I'm, I'm really not. I think there are flashes and glimpses of Zlatan, which people kind of look at and say, oh, yeah, he's going to be the next Zlatan. Actually, I don't think technically he's anywhere near as good as Zlatan Ibrahimovic. So we can put that comparison in the bin. I agree with you on that. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Nick Homo says it's a scam as well. Uh, Jay Sayer says Skamaka is like if you bought Slatan from Wish. Oh my God. I've had some dodgy experiences with Wish. Uh, honestly, when I first discovered the Wish app, right? And this is a stupid little story. It's sidetracking from Arsenal, but I'm going to tell you it anyway. When I first discovered Wish, I went on there and I saw what appeared to be and was advertised as a Nike pair of trainers. And they were like, they weren't like, you know, sometimes like on Wish, you get stuff that's like a pound and you're like, oh my God, I've got to buy this. And if it's good, great. If it lasts me 
a week. Great. If it's shit, I'll just put it straight in the bin. I only paid a pound for it. But I bought this pair of trainers for about £30. They looked legit. They looked genuine. They looked really good. And when they arrived, oh, my God, if I tell you what turned up, it was laughable. I put them straight in the bin because I was not going to be seen dead walking around in those. But, yeah, uh, for those of you that don't know what Wish is, it's a website where you can buy stuff normally really, really cheap. Um, but, uh, yeah, most of the time the quality, let's say, is questionable. OK, uh, let's um, let's have a look at some of your questions then. Beg your pardon. Uh, OK, Matt says rank our links from most likely to least likely. OK, so right now, I believe the most likely is Yuri Tiedemans. I think the next most likely is Gabriel Jesus. After that, I'm not sure anything else is is particularly convincing for me at the moment we talked at length there about Zinchenko about the fact that he will want to be playing central midfield going forward and that will be a big part in the decision he makes regarding his future moving forward and I completely agree with that but as I said to you guys for me and I'm not saying he's a bad midfielder half of the appeal of Zinchenko is that ability of him to be able to drop into the defence and drop into left back or various other positions. You take that away, all of a sudden it, it doesn't feel like the most attractive proposition to me anymore, given what he's probably getting paid at City and how you're going to have to mirror that or better that and also what you're going to have to pay to prize him away from there. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Clock N Seb says, I get the no Champions League stumbling block regarding transfers, but do you see teams like Manchester United struggling with this too? I think that players in an ideal world want to play in the Champions League, but I don't know that it's the be all and end all nowadays the way it was or the way it is normally put across by the media. I think that if you believe that a club is is on the cusp or is close to getting back into the Champions League or that you will be a contributing factor, a contributing part to them restoring their Champions League status, then why wouldn't you consider that move anyway? you got to think that this no Champions League thing, as far as we know right now, it's only for the upcoming season. So if you believe the club overall on the whole is moving in the right direction and on up, an upward trajectory, it might not matter to you for a year, in which case you might take that decision to join them. Where Manchester United are concerned, I think they're such a big football club. They've got so much money to throw at things and they will throw huge pay packets at people. I think that for them, you know, if they go and have a big summer in terms of what they spend, bring in the right players, they've obviously changed things up with Eric Ten Hag. I think players will look at Manchester United and think, well, I'm not going to play Champions League next season, but there's no reason why I can't be the following season and the season after that and the season after that. So I think you've got to remember when we talk about no Champions League football, we're not talking about no Champions League football ever. We're talking about no Champions League football in this upcoming season. But if you can be convinced and if you believe that a club is moving in the right direction, then it's probably something that a lot of players would be willing to sacrifice to get the move to where they ultimately want to be. Let's move on uh, through the comments. Uh, Zeus says, could we get 50 million from player sales this window? I think Genduzi is going to end up going for about eight, nine million pounds, whatever it is. Maybe that's euros. Uh, there was a few million for Mavropanos. There was, uh, there's going to be probably four or five million for Lucas Torreira. Will we get anything for Hector Bayerin? Not sure about that. I don't think we'll be able to raise 50 million. Um, I really don't. Unless we start moving on people like, uh, you know, your your Maitland Niles is. Can we get eight to 10 million for Maitland Niles? Probably. Um, can we get eight to 10 million for Bern Leno? Probably. So I think unless some of those squad players start to move on, uh, as well, then I don't think we're going to get anywhere near that. As for the ones that have been out on loan, those deals for me are not going to fetch an awful lot of money, if I'm honest. Uh, John Daly says, after listening to this, I'm less confident about getting Jesus. How do you feel about it, Harry? Um, listen, I, I respectfully disagree with Graham. I think Arsenal would be a huge appeal to Gabriel Jesus for the reasons that I've been saying all along. A, wants to be the bride, not the bridesmaid anymore. B, the opportunity to start as a centre-forward week in, week out. I think it's something that he's craved at Manchester City. I personally don't buy into this uh, idea that he's better from the flank. I, I don't think he is. I think he's capable of playing there. 
I think he works hard and I think he's got that energy to get up and down in the wide areas. But I still think his best position is at centre forward. And I think he thinks that too. I think his relationship with Mikel Arteta is something that we have in our corner. The fact that he knows him, the fact that he understands the way he coaches and actually has been on record as saying that he quite likes it. So I think that it's still a doable deal. Now, obviously, I respect what Graham's saying and I respect what everybody is saying. And, and they're speaking from a place that doesn't have Arsenal at the centre of it. And they're speaking, obviously, based on what they hear, based on what they're told and based on hours and hours and hours of extensive research. So I respect it, but I respectfully disagree with it as well. Uh, not many people keen on the Richarlison link uh, that Graham uh, mentioned. Maxim says, why do we keep getting linked to Richarlison? His conversion rate is atrocious. I do think he's a player that can, um, that can, uh, I do think he's a player that has another level to go to. Like he has more room to to push forward and and, and more room to develop and go on to a higher level. I don't know that I want to take that gamble on him, given what I think Everton are probably going to demand for him. Obviously, had they been relegated, things would have been very, very different. Um, but at this moment in time, you know, they're in the Premier League. They're not a club short of a few quid either. So I don't think you're going to be able to get him away for, for cheap, which makes this uh, not as appealing for me, if I'm being honest. Uh, let me pick out some more of your comments. And apologies if I miss some of them. They're constantly updating and I will uh, naturally... Uh, miss some, of course. Uh, Lynn says, Harry, yeah, but Jesus wants to play, not sit on the bench, and he wants to be appreciated and talked about like some other players are because he, in my opinion, has been underrated since being at Manchester City. Uh, agreed. Uh, a nice wish story here. You know what? Give me your wish stories. If you've got any wish stories, drop them in, um, and I will uh, I will read a couple of them out before the end of the show. Jay says, my mate thought he was buying a normal-sized bong from Wish, and it got delivered, and it was the size of a peanut. It was a key ring. Uh, Cass says, as an Arsenal fan, I must admit, I'm not feeling the Jesus hype, although if he signs, I will support whoever wears the shirt. But if he doesn't, will Arsenal have a backup plan for another striker? Well, you'd like to think that they do, right? And as Graham said, it's very, very rare now for a club to go all in on one player and not identify alternatives and not have uh, different options in mind just because of the very nature of the modern day transfer window. Uh, Clock and Seb says, your wish experience sounds a lot like the Pepe deal. Yeah. Um, what else have we got? Do -do 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 -do. Um, Harambe agrees with Graham. He says, Jesus consistently puts up over 20 appearances a season for City and wins trophies every single year. I just can't imagine why he would want to come to Arsenal and battle for sixth place playing with El Nenny. Yeah, but th th this is the thing, mate. This is how people put the spin on it that they want, right? So Arsenal weren't battling for sixth place. Arsenal were battling for fourth place this season. We just fell short, but we were battling for it. We were in it until the last day of the season. And then to say he's going to play with Elneny, well, it's not about Elneny. It's about playing with Saka. It's about playing with Odegaard. It's about playing with Thomas Partey. Um, you know, so this is just a classic example of how you can make everything seem doom and gloom and negative and miserable when actually you've kind of overlooked half and probably the most important part of the picture. Uh, what else have we got? Um, Justin says, do you think signing Jesus uh, will have any influence on other signings? for Arsenal as well. Does he have that star power? Well, I think it will, um, I think it will, it will send a message. You know, the fact that somebody like Gabriel Jesus, whose stock right now is, is so very high because in particular, the way he um, ended last season, I think if people look at that and see that, uh, they will be, um, they will be positive about Arsenal and they'll think, yeah, you know what? Hold on. He's decided to go there. Uh, so why not? I'm not saying like it's going to be like the domino effect and we're going to end up getting the five best players in the world after Gabriel Jesus signs. But you know what I mean? I think it's one of those signings that is big enough, positive enough, bold enough to send out a bit of a statement. And that's kind of what we need. Um, Matt says, should I drive eight hours and pay $70 to go and see our preseason match against Everton in Baltimore? Yeah. Uh, if you uh, if you don't get to see Arsenal regularly um, and they're that, you know, they're they're not too far 
I know eight hours is very far by UK standards. I don't know if it's that far by US standards. Uh, take the opportunity, mate. Go along and uh, and I'm sure you won't regret it. Uh, Obradek says, this hay fever allergy is killing me too, Harry. I don't know what to do yet. Yeah, oh, mate, it's so bad today as well. Um, I take tablets. I've, I've been prescribed tablets for it because it stops me doing my job. I mean, I was on the radio a couple of weeks ago and I was having to mute my microphone to sneeze and and I was wheezy and, and all of this and I was struggling to sleep and all of that jazz. And I the last few years have been prescribed these tablets that have really, really helped me once I've been taking them for a while and they get into your system and they start to grab a hold of you. But I must say today, um, they're not having any effect. I don't know why today is particularly bad. Uh, but it is uh, for me and uh, wish you uh, all the best as well. OK, look, we're going to leave it there. Um, I've taken uh, a few of your questions, a few of your thoughts. Great to hear from uh, Graham as well. And we'll be back a little bit later on uh, with another bit of content for you as well. Thank you all so much, as always, for tuning in. Thank you to Graham for giving us his time. And we'll be back very, very soon with more. Hope those of you that are suffering with hay fever feel a little bit better. Hope those of you that have ordered from Wish are not disappointed. And I hope uh, those of you who uh, are thinking about making an eight-hour trek to see the Arsenal decide to do it. I said I'd read out your Wish stories. I just remembered I'd do it next time. Uh, so if you've got them, put them in the comments below. I'll catch you all soon. Goodbye. I'm Martin Tyler. And you're listening to Harry Simeon.